What's up? What's up? Wheatfield. How y'all doing? How y'all doing? It's Wednesday, top of the week. Wonderful Wednesday, as I would say. Top of the week. Nothing but downhill from here. What is it? Wednesday. Is it November 30th? I believe it is November 30th. Shout out to everybody who's got a birthday today. Happy birthday. If it's your birthday, it's your birthday. It's your birthday. So happy birthday to you, Wheat. How you doing? I don't think I've ever said that before. My stepdad, he passed. His birthday was yesterday. And I just saw that. So maybe that's what prompted me to say happy birthday to you all who are he still here and able to celebrate it. I hope it is a beautiful day. Whether you're spending it alone, Ashe, or with a whole bunch of friends and family, either way, I pray that it's beautiful. Yes. Let me get this sip. I have faith that your day is beautiful. I show not for show sure know that uh, my coffee practices... It's giving me just a little bit of weight. I don't know if it's that holiday weight because we've been eating since uh, Appreciation Day, y'all. We've we been eating. We got all kind of snacks and stuff going on. <laughs> and I was talking about the prices at the grocery store about these snacks. is hot. Woo! Have you up in there making life decisions? They do. But you know what? Again, I, we've been talking about dark psychology because it is no reason why in the hell these prices is so high. I don't, I don't get it. I just don't. I don't understand. Yeah, they want to save price of gas. Now look, okay, we've been transporting the same goods with the same gas. For how long? And now, I mean, like, really? Because COVID was the perfect reason for them to jack the fucking airline prices all the way through the damn roof. And now every year when you want to travel, it's astronomically high. Enough to make you stay home and be like, uh, we gonna video call on the phone or something. I don't know, I'm just saying. We on this right here, y'all. We back on our 48 Laws of Power. Spirit said we ain't touched down through them roots. Like down in that book in a minute. So we just gonna jump on in here and see what it has to say to us. I was feeling this right here thing, cause thinking about uh, actually the principle before it came to me. Because I'm on Facebook too. And all you see is follow for follow, follow for follow, follow for follow. But I mean, follow for follow for what though? What am, what am I following? And what is the message that you're putting out? What is the product that you're putting out? So, you know, we in the groups, you follow, 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 follow. But, you know, you got to stop and look and see. What are these people selling? What are they message? I mean, one thing I decided to do like, huh, uh, if you won't have no page, I'm not following you. I'm not putting no friend, friend requests and you don't have a page. Why? What am I friending? You're not even sharing no information and I don't know what you're doing with mine. So uh, to blindly follow, no. I don't want to blindly follow you. I don't. You know. And Power Law 27 talks about that. Power Law 27 talks about that. Can y'all get that in there? I can't see. All right. Play on people's need to believe to create a cult-like following. Playing on people's need to believe. So, believe in what, though? Believe in, I mean, like, we on Facebook and everybody doing this follow for follow, but what are, what are we doing it for? I mean, everybody on there trying to get monetized, I reckon, but don't you got to put out content for that? I mean, do you just get paid on there for just having followers? I mean, I've seen people who got thousands. I mean, not not just no one, two, seven, ten thousand. I mean, 30, 40, 50,000 followers. And then they're getting paid out. What? So what are we putting all of this extraneous effort into when if if the point is to be monetized right and then if you look at the monetization and show that they really still ain't paying you too much of shit to do this then what is your following for you have to have a message you have to have a vision so for us personally we're on there to get people to come over to the show 
I mean, this is not something that is monetized. I mean, it's just not. We put these messages out here because it's been dropped on us that we have a service to bring. You know, we, we share the gift out and we edify on to self so we can edify the source. And we serve that out to the wheat field so that you can edify yourself or be edified and edify the source. I mean, that's what it is. And then when we come together... And under a similar mindset, I mean, yours being that you are whole, creation is whole, you know, there's nothing missing, we're abundant, we can be joyful at any time we choose to be, you know, it's all about changing your mind, changing your thoughts, your behavior, your, at what you speak out, thank you, Father, and your behaviors that result of those changes. It makes our lives fuller. It makes our experience on the plane that much better. We're on the pathway to peace. And whatever I can do to affect that change, yeah, I would want people to come along and us collaborate and partner up on that front. But to blindly follow for the sake of following, I'm not really into that. I'm just not. So, on this Wednesday, you know, what is your goal? Follow for follow for what? Are you blindly leading? Are they blindly following? What is the point? Where are we going? Where are you wanting to take people? Where is, what is your vision? You're asking for followers, not you particularly, but you person out there in the ether with no page and no profile, but you want followers. Why? What is the point? What, 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 why would I just follow you for to just to believe in something that that what, what what is it connectivity well what what well what are you putting out there and are you even a real person you know what i mean these days you have to be careful just following folks for the sake of following i don't know it's a whole thing i could think of some january 6th shit with a whole bunch of people got caught up in some mess because they was probably following for the sake of just following getting emotionally wrapped up into this thing and then they all turned into a whole bunch of scapegoats because i don't think that anybody that was truly really responsible for what happened on cap on the capitol on january the 6th uh actually got held accountable and that's i believe is law 26 keeping your hands clean. Now, Trump hands wasn't necessarily clean. I mean, we could see that the man got some dirt all over his hands. I mean, we don't have to have no faith on that because we could see it for sure. I mean, faith is nothing but the evidence of those things that's not yet seen, right? But we see that. We know. Huh. What we don't know is whether something gonna happen about it. I mean, we kind of feel like it ain't nothing gonna happen. This man talking about running for president again. Are you serious? Anywho, let's jump into Law 27, y'all. People have an overwhelmingly overwhelming desire to believe in something. <laughs> Become the focal point of such desire by offering them a cause, a new faith to follow. Mm. We was just talking about how well Trump did that, right? Offering people a new faith to follow, make America great again. Whew. You talking about something that hit folks in the kingdom? What? Make America great again? It's not great anymore. What happened? That's a very big statement, isn't it? And then it's like, make it great again. He's got the plan. He knows how to do it. We're going to follow him. We don't care what he's saying. We don't care if he grabs them by the, and takes them in the, no, let's just, he must know the way, he must. Follow your dumb ass up in the Capitol and did stuff, I'm so sorry. <laughs> that was, that was my tea. <laughs> oh, Spirit said, yeah, okay, all right, <laughs> That was not very, I mean, it's blind, blind following, get you caught up in, nas, in some nonsense, like really, 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 really for real. Come on with this thing, keep your words vague, yes, he vague as shit. How you gonna make it great, he never said, never said it. We still waiting, he, he ain't been president for two years, we still trying to figure out how he was gonna make America great. By putting bleach in your arm, 
and prescribing shit to you that ain't even blind leading the blind. The blind following the blind. I mean, it's like, come on, what are we doing it with our lives? Following for the sake of following. It's hilarious to me right now. Because I, look, I was on a whole social media ban for like 15 years. I think I had maybe one platform and that was just professional. That's it. Get into all this other world. Now, I, uh, you know, to do this work, the service, you have to engage. You have to jump out into the pool. And you talking about feeling like a duck out of water? Huh? Yeah, I got to have some faith on this. I do. I got to have some faith. Because it's like, who are we following and why? What is the why? Always asking why, beloved. Always asking why. Come on. Give your new disciples rituals to perform and ask them to make sacrifices on your behalf. Did that man not have them out there giving them rituals and chants and mantras? And he would change them depending on what he wanted them to do. This being the news, fake news, fake news. Win the election, lock her up. Lock her up. You know what I mean? Like, is you have to be real careful with getting into that cult-like mindset. And people buy into it. And then they wonder why they don't really see the result. Because it wasn't real in the first place. The results were never there. First of all, if you think about the message, he never told you what he was going to do. Just sit up there and yelled about some stuff. And made you feel like he had a plan. Or made emotionally connected to you. Emotionally, emotional. You won't even let me say it because it's not emotions. But he connected to their emotion, did he not? He manipulated their emotion to make a connection with you so that you would believe and follow him blindly. Yeah. And have y'all doing stuff, not y'all, not you personally, because you the wheat. I know you. Are, but if you a cross watcher, come on, wheat. Maybe not. I don't know. I call all y'all wheat, you know, because you could be a wheat or a tear, depending on where you at in your process. I'm just saying. Everybody has the potential to change their mind and to repent, even the fallen, the fallen, right? Is that right, Father? Yes, the fallen does have the right to repent, pay their recompense, and get on the right side of things, you know, polarize themselves to some positive shit. We can, they can make it happen. I'm just saying. But when you choose to stay in a fallen place, in a sunken place, then uh, that's what it is. You, you've already made the choice. You choose it daily to stay there. And people choose daily to follow folks who have no vision, no purpose, who can't tell you a strategy, who can't show you the way. And I feel like that when we talk about relationships, because you're supposed to get into a relationship and submit and do all of this following. But follow what? Have you put people through a season to so they can show you what they, you know, proof is in the pudding? What are you following and why? Where is, are they taking you? Don't be following and just running up behind nobody with no blind loyalty. And then get caught up in some shit you can't readily walk away from. Have faith on that. Yeah, baby. We got some cards out, y'all. You know how it go. We got some cards. We got quite a few of them over here. My little table is packed. We got uh, how many? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine sets of cards on the table. We ain't probably not going to get through all of them. I don't even know what we going to pull. We don't. Today, we just really want to... Uh, Think about this law, because it show hit me. And to see that that is a whole thing, it's like, yeah. Because you can see it in the mechanism of social media. You, you can. Folks blindly following each other just for the sake of following. Following, following, following. Follow me, follow me, but you're not doing nothing, bro. What are you doing? And why am I following you? Why would I give you my time, my attention, my engagement if you're not doing nothing? You got like four profile pics and one from 2019, one from 2021, and the other one from two days ago. It's almost 2023. What are you doing? You got 
you got 4,000 followers, people following folks with no profile, like none. Why? What are we doing? Now, and then, uh, the, of course, the whole new thing is to jump over onto Twitter and, and get it popping there because that is the new platform where everybody goes. I don't know, y'all. We're going to have to be consistent in one of these platforms. I'm just saying for your girl, like, T, we're going to have to be consistent in one of these platforms. Like, and I can't, you know, it's hard because to go up against the mold and ma the machine, you know, and, and to see where your audience is. Where is the audience? Well, guess what? They're on TikTok. Doing what? Following. I'm having difficulty. Just putting it out there. <laughs> Just saying. Come on, Daddy. You want this? No. Anything up here? Yes. What would you want? This one? We just grabbed that. Just saying. Maybe I need to ask Father first before I grab the cards. Right? Keep the Lord in front of you. Follow the Lord. Yes. That's what that was. I just jumped out there. Father said, you better <laughs> put something on here. Get behind the young wheat. I said, okay, father, fall back, fall back, fall away. Back wheat. How y'all doing? It's Wednesday. We getting up about it. I'm telling you, look, don't be blind, blindly following after nobody. It'll put your miracles in reverse. It will. Because you don't know what the hell you following. These folks, they just don't. Yeah, we reject that shit. Reject and release and it's complete. Uh -huh, it's complete. And I got some gratitude for the fact that we going to follow our instincts and just come together on that. This vanity? No. Just to be doing it for the sake of doing it. I'm trying to get this light that's over here. It's like, you know. Just to be doing something for the sake of doing it? Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. We No, 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 no. We better than that. We are. We got to put some some thought into this here thing. We got to put, you know, our logics behind it. Our why. Why, why, why are we doing it? Why Why am I following you? What, what, what does it do in terms of edification? Yes. What does it do in terms of edification? Yes. Pray. Pray. You know. What are we doing in terms of education? And when I ask them questions, that's a prayer. You know, that is me seeking within self, you know, to discover the reason why am I doing this? You know, having it delivered onto me so that I can have it revealed onto me. You know, edifying onto self so that I can edify the source. That's the point. It's so many people out there to follow and to get information with, to engage with, to collaborate with, to generate partnerships with. Um, and be sure that you're calling in the right ones. Things that align with your goals. Yeah, perseverance, discovery, workaholic, release, destiny, rejection, completion, and impatience. I definitely feel impatience. Yeah, because... You know, people are just looking for the get rich right now. Yeah. What do we say? Having faith. Having faith. You know, maybe they're seeking perfection. You know, it's a lot of times, you know, that's what's required in the social media realm. It's like that sense of perfection. Again, destiny is here and release there's something in here maybe you're praying somebody is praying to be released from something that is uh preventing them from getting to their destiny you know and it could be uh toxic relationships it could be toxic behavioral patterns and uh habits mm. what the up yeah maybe it is a sense of perfection Maybe somebody is praying for perfection because renewal is here too, you know. And service also fell out. So your service is definitely in here. Is this facade? Where is the facade? Ah, uh, yeah. 
impatience again we just saw that i said impatience is wrapped up in here some kind of way so let's look at this we have somebody renewing you know themselves you know their goal or vision or just themselves period they had spiritual self i feel has been renewed and made me moving into a sense of perfection of course perfection is not a real thing because we are constantly growing and evolving but maybe they are striving for perfection or just on that uh pathway you know that's what i call the pathway to peace when we talk about knowledge and wisdom and and um getting on to peace that is self-discovery and the more you discover about self, to me, coming together within self and acknowledging your whole you is perfection. It is. Because the Most High made you in such a way where you have not only your strengths, but your weaknesses. And both teach you about self, about your pathway, about um, how you relate to others how do you relate to you in the environment and the world around you how do you relate to creation as creation is experiencing creation how do you do that personally right as a piece of the source how do you do that and to recognize that you have your light and your dark you have your low vibration you have your high vibration how do you marry them how do you get to balance and when you get to balance and you decide how you're going to polarize that's the whole thing. How are you going to polarize, beloved? Are you going to polarize to the negative or the low vibration? Are you going to positive, pol polarize positively to the high vibration? And leaning into one of those polarities, again, not straddling the fence, but all the way in one side or the other, is my idea of perfection. Now, that could seem really dark on one end like have you ever ooh 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 I just watched Thor Love and Thunder like 17 times last week it's one of my new favorite movies um y'all know Sasha like to get up here when I'm channeling so anywho uh yeah so it was this dude in there called Gore and he was the the villain supposedly right but this villain who went through a pro cause you know he okay if you hey, if you haven't watched the movie I mean it's been out long enough where this is not really a spoiler alert I mean it is what it is at this point but starts off with this dude named Gore and he's carrying his daughter through the desert they are blind followers of this sun god named Rapu I mean blind followers like following this dude to like like you know how we do in you know. You told me to be a devoutee. You know, I'm a devoutee and I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm committed and I'm steadfast. I, I'm a disciple of, of, of you and I am following your word. I'm thought to the letter, to the T. And anything that I need, I'm asking. They done went through drought and famine and there's no water. And now he's to the point where like his daughter is dying. They're walking through the desert of dry land, the land of dry bones. It's just dry. And 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 he's asking the gods, he's praying to his God, like, help me, help me, help me, help. Don't help me. Help my baby. Save my baby. Like, me, I perish. But save my baby. Because that's my love right there. That's the love. Got nothing. Baby passed, all that. Like, you know, had to bury his daughter then he could hear a voice calling out to him. So he follows the voice into this garden that's sitting there in the middle of the desert. Now, for me, Lati, I'm like, oh, crap. He done went into a mirage, right? That's not real. It was real. It was the garden, like, eating type of place. Just roll with your girl, you know. Anywho, he get in there and find out that the God that he been praying to as a devotee this whole time is like, yeah, your whole function is just to praise me, just to be a follower. And when all of y'all die, I get more. Pretty much. So, oh boy, pissed. Like, what? I mean, crushed, soul crushed. Like my, we, the whole planet, the whole, your whole people, like all of us have perished. The land is dry. There's no food. There's no water. It's, it's not even habitable anymore. 
Like everything has been sucked out. I'm the last one. Last one standing. And my daughter has perished and I have never not once turned I have stayed committed loyal to you all the way through even unto death of my child you talking about somebody with it, to find out that the shit had been a joke the whole time like only thing I wanted you to do was just praise me for the sake of praise like I eat your praise like your praise makes me strong that's it that's the only thing is just for you to just worship me and that's it Oh boy was like, what? Oh yeah, all oh, y'all. The sword of death or whatever, the necro sword or whatever it is, it's called the, the sword of death. Uh said, We taking revenge. And we gonna go on a whole path to take care of this issue across all of the omniverses. So let's just head on over to eternity and take care of this. Now if you're gonna roll with me, I'ma show you what this is for. And he was like, bet, I'm with it. And started right there with that first guy, like, yuck, out of there. Bet you nobody else won't follow you blindly. That's what he said. Movie is very interesting, very deep. Love it. Anywho, because what people do, develop relationships out of obligation. You know what I mean? And you don't even know why. Just blind. Obligated for some reason. It's a facade. Spirit say release that. Release that. What, following folks for what? In relationships and, comp and partnerships, why? For no reason at all? Just because you want my energy? No. My energy is not given on to you, beloved, for your sake. It's to edify the source, the Lord of all, of creation itself. A lot of people, you know... So, Elijah, when he was working to uh, free, well, from mental freedom and, and return the children of Israel back to the original way. Because, of course, you know, the children of Israel has always asked for a leader. Always. You know, and that's one of the things, what was I intended to do in this life? That's a question for somebody. Again, your destiny and service is down here. What were you intended to do in this life? We don't know. How or in what way do I experience life myself when I'm alone? How do you experience yourself when you're alone? Usually your service is wrapped around something that you would do, whether you with other people or not, whether you have followers or not, whether you get paid for it or not. Whether it's recognized or not, it's something oftentimes that's a hobby, something that you get lost into in doing and the time just pass. You know, you don't even realize how long it's been and uh, it's usually helpful to other people. But if you ever go on a journey to turn, you know, that service, to put it out there, to have other people support, engage, and collaborate in that, you might want to be sure that you're not calling in relationships from the, uh, uh, a pseudo place. And I didn't want to say pseudo self because I don't feel that, but it's just, is it, don't lose your authenticity. Don't lose you while you're collaborating. And don't create relationships. I can't tell you what fuck shit to do. All recommendations. But be careful and mindful of how you're developing your partner partnerships and relationships. That they're not out of obligation. That you're not obligating yourself to something that you should not be a part of. Connecting with things that could, you know... Or just being blindly led. You know, jumping in there with the, in the boat with people and just, you know, doing stuff for the sake of to try to promote something. I don't know. And, you know, it could. It could impact you reaching your destiny. Because your destiny is in this service. 
And whatever it is that you're destined to serve is going to be helpful to people. I see help and comfort here. I've never paid attention that uh, this woman here is surrounded by two other spirits. You see them in the yellow. They are not even really there. You know, this woman who's getting ready to pass, someone's comforting her in service, right? And she is getting ready to pass, and that could be, you know, uh, her parents from a younger place, but it's somebody in the spirit that's coming to reach out to her. Maybe to, you know, walk her into the afterlife, you know, so she's not alone when she transitions. You know how they say people will come to get us. You will start to see um, people who have passed on before you um, actually transition. You know, maybe a part of your service could be, you know, assisting people in that work or comforting them in their end time or just comforting in a very bad time at end of any cycle it could be like a counselor or a therapist or something like that somebody that works with energy works with their hands but i do see something that's very caring but in uh again don't get caught up in relationships that are uh out of obligation yeah renewal is definitely coming from prayer and releasing yourself from relationships that are not really you know they're obligatory it's not out of want and true desire and appreciation yeah and it's destined for you to release this i think it's going to move you into your destiny what was i intended to do in this life sometimes getting caught up in these relationships that are that that are holding you back or you're just in it for the sake of being in it uh keeps you from getting to your destiny and you need to release it to move forward releasing it to move forward because that you can end up right here you can end up one depending on what your destiny is that person probably just can't go with you they cannot and if you don't release them then you hold your destiny up because they cannot go and you can miss out on your destiny in this lifetime, this life cycle. It could be delayed and held up or die. Your destiny could die, you know, because you refuse to release that which doesn't serve you. Play. I am completely engaged in what I do in the here and now. I call it play instead of work. I'm deeply fulfilled by all that I do. Whatever this service is, it's something, again, that you're completely engaged in. We talked about, you know, doing early, being engaged and engulfed in something. It may have felt like a hobby, you know, something that you like, oh, and then somebody said, you know, oh, you, you know, put that out there. Or the most high could have said, put that out there. This is your pathway to your destiny. But before you can get there, renew yourself and coming together perfecting yourself perfecting your service perfecting whatever this is renewal perfection and prayer all right here is going to help guide you into releasing this relationship that you, that is out of some sort of obligation not necessarily just the love that is supposed to be there to release that will help you move into your destiny and into your service. Again, everybody can't go with you. And sometimes you will catch other folks' karma because you attach to something that you need to release. Guidance system. I love using my emotions, yeah, as a guidance system. They show me how close or how far away I am from what I want. When I'm feeling joy and doing the things I love, I'm in a state of allowing for my desires. I notice when I am feeling low vibrational thoughts and shift them to release resistance. Shift them to release resistance. There's some sort of relationship here that is causing resistance, preventing you from going to your next level, preventing you from moving into your destiny. Preventing you from doing what it is that you were intended to do in this life. 
And whatever it is, it's something that you get completely engulfed in. You feel like it's play. You would just do it just for the sake of doing it. It probably just makes you feel better. Not only is it servicing and comforting you, I feel, in the spirit, but it's something that you can serve out, again, onto your fellow weak, beloved, and help them. Again, you could be somebody that either cares or gives cares with your hands. You could work energy. You could be comforting with words and just a presence. You know, obviously in this card, this person, the, the, the picture is someone who's transitioning. Who's like, you, you could be somebody in hospice. You could be... It could be so many different ways to service people in the spirit and give them comfort. Like that is not just about death. It's about service onto others. What do you have from you that you can serve out to help, to heal, I feel. Yeah, I feel healing. Yes, healing. But there's some sort of impatience here. It is. There's impatience. Impatience and instinct are popping up. Anything else in this deck? No. This one? Okay. Let's get some angel answers. So we talked about, you know, your emotions telling you that it's time. Like you're praying for a renewal or you've been renewed and coming into balance. And maybe you're using your emotions as that guidance system that it is. Yes, to let you know that there's relationships here. Relationships here that need to, to go away from you. Not the right time. Is on your service. And so I feel like the not the right time on your service is because you're still stuck in this relationship here. But is it challenged? Yes. What was I in intended to do in this life? No need to worry is on top of that. That's a challenge. Maybe you are worried. Or maybe there is a worry about actually getting because again we only have so much time in this manifestation we do and for you to fulfill your destiny and fulfill your service you may be, be you may you may be being called away to step away from a relationship a partnership that's holding you back something that is out of obligation right and spirit is calling you to release it. You'll feel it. Maybe it's a situation that you are developing some impatience in. Maybe you do feel impatient with this situation. And instinct is here. Something around your emotions is telling you that this is not right. And acceptance is here as well. In order for you to accept what it is that you're supposed to be doing... To accept moving into your service. Yeah. Because you're in something that's giving you some impatience. Somebody is impatient about this. Anything else in this deck? No. But. I have felt a split. If you move. Big, big, happy changes. Yes. But you have to trust. Don't follow blindly. Don't stay in something for the sake. Maybe you got into it, you know, without seeing it all the way through. Like, really, in that mind space, bringing these two, these in alignment, right? That's what I feel. Depending on what you were seeing, and I see this. Was there something in your self-worth? And, ooh, maybe there was a lack of faith because it turned upside down. And insecurity. Yep, yep. Insecurity, faith in reverse with self worth and upright. That could definitely do it. Yeah. Because even the most confident person has insecurities about something they do. And I actually have a a thing about people who appear to be so overly confident without expressing or showing any vulnerabilities, any chinks or knots, knocks in the armor is because that's a highly insecure person behind there. A lot of times people mask insecurity behind confidence and ego. 
And we can see that phenomenon. Ooh, excuse me, y'all. That last sip, you know. We can see that phenomenon um, in narcissism. Yeah. People who are narcissistic, whether you are diagnosed or not, you know, because people throw it around as narcissism, like they have the ability to diagnose. We don't. I don't. I'm not a psychiatrist or psychologist or none of that. We can look at the traits of narcissism because every person has the traits of narcissism. We do. Look at this. No need to worry. Worry is out. Second confirmation that uh, the inability to move away from this uh, relationship or the delay in moving the, away from this obligatory relationship in whatever capacity it is is challenging your ability to get into your service or fully actualize your service. Yeah. Spirit says it's a relationship. Yeah. It's a challenging relationship. And again, you hook up with the wrong person depending on the wrong reasons. The reasons that I see back in the past here is insecurity, a lack of faith, and self-worth. You know, because it could be, you again, that feeling of worthiness within self. And self-worth is in the upright. But I feel like it's tainted. You know, like there is some, but not really. Growth. Growth through adversity. And acceptance is here again. Something that you need to accept to get into your service. But growing through this adversity is what led you into this renewal. Is re forgiveness here? No. Yeah. That's the path. Growing through some adversities. And it looks like the adversities was the insecurity and the lack of faith. That was affecting your self-worth. Yes. And to grow through that, you took on some challenges or life brought you challenges. Ooh. Okay, beloved. Because when we say, Lord, I'm going to say some words and I immediately ask, I'm going to bind them and pull them back. Pull back the power of my words or otherwise give me a way to say what I'm going to say so that I don't cause error into my own life. Please protect me and brighten my lights and my lumens in this moment. Please protect me and brighten my lights and brighten my lumens. Please protect me. If we be in alignment, please give me your ashe. Is there any words that I should pray? Do I have your ashe? All right. When we say, I... Lord, make me patient. Lord, give me some patience. Lord, give me this. Lord, give me that. Lord, give me this. You are calling challenges and adversities into your life. I am statements are critical. Not because they sound good for am formations, but what they are is a statement of beingness. I am patient. I am loved. I am whole. I am complete. When we speak from a space of insecurity, Lord, send me my husband. Lord, send me my, send me this job. Lord, give me the, I just need, I just need, I just need. We call in things from a faithless place. It's not necessarily faithless, but it's lacking faith. Because to state I am is assuredness, is confidence, is confidence in your faith that you are. You are missing nothing. And so when we say, Lord, send me this. Lord, give me that. You are calling in challenges to show you that you are already that. You're calling the opportunity to have it revealed onto you what you already are. And then we get, I know, I know, I know. Whole deck. That's a surrender. <laughs> surrender to that. We got two more that's just don't want a couple. Pride, discipline, and doubt. Yes. Yes, Father, yes. Yes, release that. Because we call in things from that space, from a space of pride. 
I love myself and see myself in everyone, but people don't see that the what the love that they're looking for is the love of self. Looking for that from the outside, somebody to follow or somebody that will follow them blindly. Blind loyalty. And we might not see it like that, but when we have not really dug into what a person is, give them a couple seasons so that you can see what they can sprout, what kind of what kind of fruit they bear, that's it, it's not a full look, beloved. It's not. Discipline to do that. Discipline to give them a full freaking harvest season, like a planting season, a nourishing and growing season. All of that work that has to go into growing something to see how they operate in and out of seasons. Yes. Why? Because we doubt. We have doubt. Doubt in our own self-worth. Doubt that you're going to lose something. Doubt that they're going to stick behind you or stay with you. And if they stay with you through, give it one test or trial. You know, you done held somebody down through one thing or they done held you down through something. Or nah, nah, huh. Let's talk about it week because tis the season for pregnancy. Okay, mess around and get hooked up and now you really obligated to something. Maybe y'all done moved in and got a place and y'all obligated to something. You can't just move around. Why? Because we didn't give it the full harvest season before you jumped into it to really see what it was. And everybody done been there. But you link up to something that's not meant for you, that's not designed to go with you, that you're not supposed to be following or on the pathway to partnership with and partnered up and collaborating, you will hold up your destiny. Why? Because they're not designed to be with you. Or maybe that came to teach you, to show you where your insecurities were, where you needed to build up your faith and show you that you are worthy and that there is a seat for you somewhere. But you got to release this before you can get to it because two things could happen. Three, really, you can never get there. You just blocked it out, right? Or two, you're going to catch all their shit and you won't get there. Or three, you're going to wear yourself down and you're never going to get there because you're still linked up to something that can't go. You can't go because you won't release who else can't go. And before you know it, it puts everything in a challenge. What is it that you're intended to do in this life? It's a worry about that because you're not releasing. Your, your, your emotions are saying, release this. Your emotions, your guidance system is telling you to release a relationship that is not real. It's obligation. And how do I know it's a relationship? Because Spirit said it's a challenged relationship. Something that is causing you some impatience. It is. Maybe because you could feel it. Your emotions are telling you that it's time for you to get the on. GFO. Y'all we? And it's acceptance in that. You're going to have to accept that it's not the right time for your, for your service. Because you tied to something that can't go with you. You tied to something that can't go with you. This is the light worker deck right here. You tied to something that can't go with you, beloved. But when you release that, I believe that it'll clear this challenge up and everything will flow. You'll flow right into your destiny, right into your service. And sometimes, again, not sometimes... How or in what way do I experience myself when I'm alone? That's the other question to ask. I believe that when you are alone with you and those emotions, like you sit in that meditation, you sit in that spiritual bath, you can uh, feel it. You feel it. You know how you've grown through this adversity. Doubt. I, re I release the need to know all the answers. Sometimes you don't have to know everything. But know that this situation was working to bring you to balance. 
to bring you to balance, to help you discover, discover what was going on on the inside of you. Because again, when we say, I want this, and Lord, bring me this, or give me this, or give me that, or help me with this, Lord, oh, just give me some patience, Lord. You calling in opportunities to practice being patient. It is not the Lord just dropping you a dose of patience. It is giving you situations in your life to cause you to be patient, to practice patience, to show you that you already have patience, to show you that you already have discipline. To show you that you already have faith. So you talking about increase your faith? Yeah, it's going to show you something that is, is going to give you something. And adversity that is going to test your faith. And it could test it down to the socks. Like break you down to the dust. It's all coming together. Intuitive hits, soul tribe. It's all coming together. It's all coming together for you. You're going to be able to see how you grew through these adversities. You're going to be able to see it. Because again, discovery just came out. You're going to be able to see what it was going on inside of you, beloved, that this needed, this relationship had to pull out. Or how you called this relationship into your life. And now somehow you are obligated to it and you feel impatient. Yeah, divine orchestrations. Helper, helpers in the subtle realm. Divine orchestration. Absolutely. This right here was orchestrated to show you. Again, when we say, I want this, or Lord send me, or Lord, and you calling out like that, in that type of manner, your words are powerful. And in that manner, you are calling the adversities to your life, the challenges, to show you what you already are. You are pure potentiality. Every word that you speak is a prayer. Every word, every word. What lights you up? Again, what am I intended to do in this life? It's something that lights you up. Again, we started that. Something that you would do for free. You would serve it out. You serve it to yourself on a daily. Edifying onto self so that you can edify the source. And now it's something that you serve out to edify others. Or you can or you will once you break free of this. Uh, we got... It's your life's work, not a season. What's not aligned to your life that needs to be changed? Something is not aligned to your life. Spirit said it's the relationship. Cracked open. It's happening for you, not to you. It's happening to show you who you are, beloved. Who you are. Because there's some doubt about that. It is. Your guidance is divinely guided. You're being guided. You are. Do you want this deck? No. You want this one? Okay. Stress less. We did a couple flips. It's upside down. Share your song, frequency of sound, diving deep. I feel diving deep that you're not. You know, everything is surface level, I feel. And again, the diving deep part is what we need to do to discover what is on the inside. These adversities and challenges come to make you dive deep, to take you to your depths. You can either see the, the, the lowest of your low or the highest of your high to show you the breadth of you, the width, width breadth, depth of you. Go to the center of yourself, Yahweh, to take you to your core. Close your eyes. Close your eyes. If your body had a center point, what would it be? Feel it, and for a minute, keep your attention on it. If your center feels small, it feels small. Imagine expanding like a balloon. If you cannot find your center instantly, take time searching. Take time searching. When you find it, relax into the feeling and just breathe. 
stay there for a good five to ten minutes. That's meditation, beloved. Going into you, your core of you, your center. Imagining yourself walking around inside of your kingdom space. Feeling yourself in your kingdom space. Feel the real you coming back to your center. And if what's in here in this space, if you feel small, stay there. Just stay. And feel yourself bringing everything that you want into you. Attracting it all. Attracting it. What is it? Until your room just expands. Feel yourself get bigger and bigger and bigger from the inside out. From the inside, you'll feel your whole beingness expand. And if you can sit in that space, you'll feel yourself grow from that mustard seed all the way out. As big as the biggest mountain. As big as the galaxy. The, the bigger you get, the deeper inside of yourself have you gone deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper until it feels so vast and so huge completely encompassed and engulfed into self to discover all of the wonder that's in there that you have everything that you are everything let's pray our eternal Lord of all, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you for the infinite intelligence of the all and the breath of life that combines and connects us all. Thank you. Me being your surrendered vessel, your messenger, please thank you. Thank you so much for using me. I'm so humble. I'm so grateful that you were endowed me with the ability to edify self in this way so that I may edify you. Share this out with your weak, your weak, Holy Father, so that I may edify them so that they could be edified and edify onto you. Let us come together in this way so that we may magnify ourselves, brighten our lumens, and edify you, our source, the eternal Lord of all, that which created all of creation, everything, using its intelligence, your intelligence, and your breath of life, did you do that? Yes, thank you. We've delivered a message, yes, for someone in the wheat field that needs to see how their emotions, that guiding system, is revealing onto them that which they have connected with only to discover what was within all along. Yes. Give them the courage and the ability to step forth and release that which you are showing them should be gone away and pass away so that they can step into the service in their fullness of their days to carry that out the rest of their day. Let us call back anything, any word that we may have spoken that will cause an error onto our life or the life of another we. Thank you. I recall that power. I recall that power. That is my word. It is my word. I recall that word so that it shall not return to me void in vain that I cast it down. I bind it up. Any word that I have spoken that will cause an error onto my life, I call it back. I call it back. I bind it up and we cast it down. We cast it down. Thank you so much, Father. Thank you. I am whole. I am complete. I am whole. I am complete. I am love. I am compassion. I am peace. I am understanding. Yes, yes. I am sympathy. I am empathy. I am patient. I am patient. I am whole. I am abundant. I am joyous. I am intelligent. I am built with the spirit of counsel, a guide to lead me. And as I ask for you to step forward and lead and guide us on this day, seal this prayer. Seal it. 
bring us into alignment for having touching earth to do a work here on earth in earth that so that what is done on earth is as it is done in heaven and we do that according to the will of our most high the eternal lord of all of creation again created by your intelligence and connected by your breath of life all things and to that we give all the honor all the glory all the worship yes thank you thank you thank you for the vibration and frequency of love for allowing us to experience it and show and allowing it to us to use it to show us ourselves give us the ability to lean and to polarize yes to come to balance come to balance and come into alignment with your will, Father, with your will. Is there any other words that we can pray on this day? Well, let us remember that every word that we say, we still pray. So to be mindful of what we say and what we call is critical. Thank you for recalling my power. Thank you for endowing me with the ability to do so, the awareness to do so. Thank you, thank you, thank you. In all things we pray according to your given, your goodness, your authority. Please grant us with your ashes. Thank you guys so much for staying here with me. This was a pretty deep reading, and I definitely wanted to recall those words back because they have an effect. They do. And uh, I pray that you are able to get through this as well. That I pray as well. So uh, to the next now, with your girl, Lati, on the Tears and Wheat Tarot show, where you show sure enough never know what you're going to get. Huh? You just never know. You just never know. It's show sure enough is like a box of chocolates. Mm. And I got to lay off the chocolate, y'all, because uh, your girl been snacking between the chocolates, the cookies, the cakes, uh, the cream, and the whipped cream, and all of that stuff, and the coffee. Mm. We picking up a pound or two. We definitely taking on some extra. Ha! So we going to have to work that out. But know this, though. For real, y'all. I love you. I love you. I love you so much. I love you just like I love me. And this situation will come together. It will. You're being led in the spirit. But uh, I guess the last thing that I could say is follow your instinct. Your instinct is telling you. Your emotions are telling you. Your guidance system is telling you. Sit in your center. By returning to your center regularly, you will have a better recognition of your emotions. Yeah. Feelings and your needs. You will feel more empowered when you feel you live for yourself, not just for others. And I think that's beautiful. It really is. To the next now. Your favorite channel message, Lati. We're going to call this here an ashe. Mm.